Many philosophers or scientists say that consciousness is just brain activity. So neurons firing or chemicals flowing. What do you, say, what do you think is missing from that picture? Yeah, I think that, uh, you know, if that is the case, then, you know, uh, everything about us is sort of driven by the neurons inside of our head. Um, and it, it, yeah, it doesn't seem to take account of the fact that the mind is its own sort of distinct entity that is actually powerful in its impact back on even onto the, the body and, and brain. Um, yeah, I mean, there's all kinds of uh, reasons why that doesn't seem to be a very holistic view of, of human beings. It's just looking at them through the lens of their brain and, and using that to make sense of everything that it means to be a human being. Um, but I mean, we could get, you know, there are lots of implications that, you know, if 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 everything is coming from the neurons in our head, then every opinion that we have, every belief that we hold is not coming from us, but from neurons beyond our control. Um, and therefore, what does it even mean? Um, and of course, there are implications for free will, um, you know, every action that we take and, and decision that we make is coming from forces beyond our control. And therefore, can we be held morally responsible for, for any of those things? Um, and so there are all kinds of implications I could say more about, but also we don't seem to live as though that we are just our brains. You know, we seem to live as though there's something that it is to be me, <laughs> actually, that I have an inner life, an inner reality, um, a sense of self uh, that is clearly connected to my brain, but is more than just brain activity. Yes, I see. And you know, onto that, when, when you talk about now the sense of self, some, some uh, like there's a current that denies completely the sense of self and then say that the self is just an illusion. How would you respond to this claim? Well, it's very hard. The person espousing that view assumes that they are independent of the phenomenon that they describe. How do we know that their very, their very perspective is not itself an illusion? Um, and therefore can't be trusted as well. So it's kind of self-defeating. And of course, when it comes to saying that consciousness is an illusion, it, it then becomes impossible to say anything. Um, and actually, you're talking about taking away or attributing to illusion that which is most fundamental to our existence. You know, perhaps Descartes was right when he said that the thing that we can't, that we know with greater certainty is that we're conscious um Cogito and, and for that, yeah. Yeah. yeah exactly yeah. Yeah. and so I, I think that i think it's quite problematic and even i mean i think one of the people that espoused this kind of view was the late daniel dennett who was a, a brilliant philosopher but even in trying to make the argument he assumes the first person um and, and and so it's so fundamental to, to being human that it's impossible to ignore it, even to make the case that consciousness is illusory. Yes, yes, I see. And what about uh, those who claim that um, the mind is actually generated by the brain, but is not the brain? Can you explain a little bit this nuance here? Yeah, so I suppose um, the views that um, we talked about first are I guess, eliminative views or reductive physicalist views where they're saying that the mind is reducible to physical processes in the brain. This second view that you mentioned is perhaps referred to as non-reductive physicalism, which is saying that the mind is um, actually when a number of brain parts come together, something new comes into being that is greater than the sum of those original building blocks that can't simply be reduced to physics and chemistry, but it is t connected to the biology of the brain. And so it's a, not a form of non-reductive physicalism. Um, and, you know, actually you get people who are theists and non-theists uh, that hold this view. Uh, the difference being, I guess, and the kind of system they believe that we are in Mm -hmm. Um, I think, I think the problem with, with, um, you know, both views, both the, the view that you are simply your brain or that the 
the mind emerges from the brain is how do non-conscious neurons generate uh, a conscious mind? Uh, if it's true that we simply live in a, uh, a closed system of matter, the cause, you know, the forces of nature acting on matter, then and that matter itself isn't conscious. Mm -hmm. But how do you how do you arrive at conscious humans from non conscious matter? That's the problem that has to be solved, um, and um, and the first view that we talked about is essentially denying the existence of the conscious mind. Uh, but the second view is is saying somehow the conscious mind arose uh, from within this system. But I think that's a, a huge chasm to cross. 